انا بنت الرعب عصير عصير لا ما تجي سرعي Gabi Pahinoe was the heart. He was the emotion of Hawaii. Pops Gabi Pahinoe was a legend in his own lifetime, and he remains a legend even now, a legend with feet of clay. As a human being, without being a musician, he was just like everybody else, like sitting in this room. He was somebody that cared of the people and how you want to eat, you know, feed your kids, you know, they want to bathe, they need a towel. He was like everybody else. Gabby didn't so much do things other people didn't do. He just did them bigger than other people do. One night, we were sitting there at the tiny Mike, uh, Malaki East House. Yes. You know what tiny? Yes. We were sitting there in his house, and Gabby went, what time now, son? I don't know, I don't know, about 5.30, no, about 4.30. She said, okay, so we keep waiting. She said, what time now? About 5.50, he said, okay, okay, we go. So where we go? He said, no, wait, we go. So we jump in the car, and we drive down to Noah's house. Noah lives on the end. Mm -hmm. Hanabe is like this, see? And if you're looking out to the ocean, on the left-hand side, it's a big white house, way out of the end of the ocean, right oh, there. It's yeah, it's Noah's place, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, so we drive, <laughs> we drive well, down there. I said, where are we going? And this is all dark. I'm drunk. <laughs> you know, so we're driving down and I'm going through all these bushes and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and finally we get to this house. He said, okay, jump off. I said, where are we going? He said, no worry. So we get we get to Noah's house, park the car, climb down the rocks, walk around the ocean, all over the lava rocks, falling down, holding one six pack of beer. And finally we get there and he said, so I thought, what are we doing? He says, no worry. So we start playing, he played his guitar and we sing, and just he and I, I'm freezing, I'm drunk, I get sober now because it's so cold. And then all of us, he said, okay, now. So I told him, what? And we, he said, look outside. So I look outside, the sun was just coming up. You know, he said, I brought you here. Me and you, we're going to play for the sun. <laughs> and we did work here all on again. <laughs> and we sang to the sun. Gabby Pahinoi was born April 22nd, 1921, on what is now Ward Avenue in Kaka'ako and Honolulu. He wasn't Gabby Pahinoi yet. He was born Charles Kapono Kahahawai Jr. When Gabby was six years old, he became Hanai, adopted by Philip and Emily Pahinui. His new name was Charles Philip Pahinui. Young Charles Philip Pahinui went to Pohukaina School until he finished the sixth grade, and then he had to go to work. With other boys, young Pahinui dove for coins tourists tossed from ships. Some say that's how he got the name Gabby. The water just rolled off his kinky hair the way it rolls off gabardine cloth, and the other boys nicknamed him Gabby for his gabardine hair. Gabby did other things for money too. Anywhere he went, wherever he heard music, Gabby would stop. He would stop and he would listen. But you see, he used to sell paper and shine shoes, and then he always go give out of, uh, in, have music over there, and he, loved, and he, and he can go in with the paper, and, and he loved music. So, and that's how you learn. The band, uh, uh, I forgot what band it was, a uh, regular orchestra, and they had music, uh, and he faked his way for about six months okay. until somebody saw that he had the music chart upside down. <laughs> Gabby never did learn how to read music. Instead, he knew how to listen. Gabby taught others the same way he learned by listening. You see, the thing about Gavin, whenever we travel outside, I, was, I never wanted to sleep. I went until Gavin went to sleep, and usually he was the last guy. Everybody else passed out, you know? And I would stay up, force myself to stay up because I knew something was gonna happen. As a boy, Gabby hung out wherever good music was played. And especially, Gabby liked to listen to music at the Rathskeller at the corner of Hotel and Alakea Streets in downtown Honolulu. It was at the Rathskeller that Gabby got his first paying job as a musician. One night, the bass player didn't show up. The band asked Gabby to take the missing man's place. Gabby didn't know how to play the bass, but that didn't stop him. He just did it, and they paid him for doing it. He was 13 years old. Nobody knew then what we know now. Gabby Pahinui and his music would help father a cultural renaissance. 
Gabby was the heart. Warm, earthy, generous. He shared more than his music. Try something to remember it was like a it's a big party <laughs> every weekend. <laughs> so it was just a gym session, Friday. Yeah. No, I was young. Saturday, Sunday, everybody pack up. Every weekend since we moved here in 58, yeah. here in Wamanawa. That's what it was, music, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Continuous music. It was all kinds of groups used to come over. And the way we feel, or felt towards music was or uncles and aunties coming over and music was a thing in this family. Yeah, uh, and also, to, no matter how great they were at that time, he should introduce us to them as uh, your uncle or your auntie, so we didn't know how great they were. Gabby and his music were a focal point for a generation. His music, his laughter, the experience of Gabby influenced everyone who heard or saw him. Well, we used to have gray line buses lining <laughs> yeah. up down this road. At one time, uh, the four Migos came, yeah. They wanted to get to that, yeah. Jill Atkins, you know. A lot of top musicians came. Peter Paul and Mary too. Right? Peter Paul, right? And then, I didn't think that music at my age, so I just didn't buy it. <laughs> Dave Guard, the Kiss and Trio. Kiss and Trio. Kiss and Trio. It's like this gathering right here. Just come over and. Oh, thank you. Quite a few musicians, and entertainers, and also uh, actors and actresses that knew him. Uh, uh, he, he showed pictures to us that it was with James, James Cagney, uh, you know, uh, Henry Fonda, Juan, and his music was far stretching to everyone, uh, the, the people of Hawaii knew Gabby by me. <laughs> but Gabby was unchanged by all the fame. He never left his day job. For years, he worked as a refuse collector for the city and county of Honolulu. Later, he worked on a city and county road crew, repairing potholes in Oahu's roads. That was part of the magic of Gabby. There was no pretense, no conceit, no sham. There was only Gabby. Raw, honest, natural. The legacy Gabby left was the heart of the lady. No one left, he left uh, each and every one of us that, that plays music. He just, uh, not, not, not only the gift he gave us, but he gave us uh, the love, the understanding uh, with, with the whole family, you know. Um, he said, just do good, whether you're playing your music or, or whatever you're doing, fishing or surfing or whatever. He said, just do your best. Always be nice to people and they will remember you. <laughs>